Hello, welcome back to the Sam Rainey Retrospective. And part rental review? I don't know, I read through this for probably videos, so I'm doing a rental review series and retrospective, but it's part of the Sam Rainey Retrospective. And also at this time, I was probably the Quick and the Dead from 1995. Now in this career, in this era in Sam Rainey's career, he just got off of Army of Darkness, which was not a big hit. I mean, people love the movie, it's more of a cult thing. But then they actually hired him to do The Quick and the Dead, written by Simon Moore. And an homage to the Spaghetti Western. The film stars Sharon Stone, Gene Hackman, Russell Crowe, and Leonardo fucking Caprio. Bruce Campbell said it best. Uh, Sam Raimi is dealing with something he never dealt with a big movie star. Like, Gene Hackman has had a career since like the 60s. He's retired now. But yes. There's a funny thing in Bruce Campbell's book where he saw Sam Raimi make Gene Hackman be like, Okay, you open the door, you sit down, and you tip your hat. And he's like, no, I won't do that. But will we do this? And, like, he just kept going back and forth, back and forth, until Jen and Hackman finally did the original direction. And, uh, <laughs> Sam Raimi turned to Bruce Campbell and says, Who's the boss? And directed his thumb to himself, like, me. He actually brought in Bruce Campbell for a day, because Gene Hackman was like, What's my motivation? And Sam Raimi never had to really say that to an actor, because he never really worked with an actor of that caliber. And Sam Raimi said, and he just called Bruce Campbell and said, Hey, you're feeling the costume. Like, oh, Sam, what's going on? He has put this on. And he put him like, here, here's the guy who, like, something, something that you're mad at. And, like, proceeded to beat the shit out of Bruce Campbell. <laughs> I mean, The Quick and the Dead is about Sharon Stone character known as Lady, who wants revenge on Gene Hatman's character, who rules this town of redemption for, for ransacking her town and for the murder of her father, which there's a lot to it, I don't want to spoil. Russell Crowe plays Court, a man who was formerly a henchman of uh, John, who was played by Gene Hatman. But now he became a preacher after, you know, killing a priest because he was forced to. He feels like he's dead for life, but he does not want to hear renown violence, he renowns violence. But he has to fight in this uh, draw game. Leonardo Kepper plays a kid who claims to be the son of Gene Hackman, who denies it, and he's joined this gun battle to get the respect of his so-called father. So, I mean, the movie has got some great San Remy moments, there's a lot of zoom, there's a lot of crash stuff, there's like crash zooms, there's zoom in, there's fucking zoom outs, there's all these crazy shots, and I'm just like, fuck yeah, this is a real San Remy western. I mean, it does feel like a spaghetti western in a way, with all the gun fights, and the music, the music's great, I mean, this movie did abysmal at the box office, it got mixed reviews, but over the years people start to love it. And people say it's one of the most underrated of Sam Raimi's back catalog. I mean, Sam Raimi is going to direct 15 movies, he's going to direct uh, Doctor Strange 2 soon, so that'd be 15 in total. And I never think he's been a bad movie. I haven't seen For Love in the Game, but I heard that was not bad, it's just forgettable in his filmography. I mean, I love Spider-Man 2, Spider-Man 2 is my, one of my 10th favorite movies of all time. I love Evil Dead, my horror movie of all time. Favorite horror movie. I love the Evil Dead trilogy. I love the Spider Man trilogy. I think Sam Raimi did the best superhero trilogy, which I'll go into later. I actually did Spider Man 1 as part of my Honest Script review. I'll still do the part of the perspective. But he has a flawless filmography Evil Dead, Crime Wave, Evil Dead 2, Dark Man, Army of Darkness, Thug, Kick in the Dead, Simple Plan, For the Love of the Game, The Gift, Spider Man, Spider Man 2, Spider Man 3, Drive Me to Hell. Oz Grand Powerful and soon to be Doctor Strange 2, which I think is going to be great. Because Sam Raimi already loves Steve Ditko, and I think it's going to be great. So ask me about my thing on that. This movie is just a lot of fun. It's like nearly two hours, and it went by a breeze. The only problem is I had to miss part of it because my fucking family video DVD is scratched. Like, seriously, people need to take care of their shit. They're renting it from a place. Other people have to watch it. Because of some asshole, I can't watch the full movie in full. I had to skip over about 10 minutes. I missed the part where an important character exits out the movie. And I'm like, I need to know what happens. I have to read the fucking Wikipedia article to know what fucking happened. I kind of guessed it. Like, there's, there's, no, there's no, there's no fluff around it. There's no mystery around it. It's just, I had, didn't get to see it. It was such an amazing moment. It was going great. It was building up to an amazing moment where the character has to exit the movie. And this fucking DVD is scratched. That is not a review of me, that is just a pet fuck you to ever did that to me. But yes, The Weekend of Dead is a great movie. I highly recommend it. 
I really hope that Sam Raimi is going to continue to be the best football living filmmaker along with Edgar Wright and Quentin Tarantino. Edgar Wright and Quentin Tarantino and Sam Raimi are the best living filmmakers right now along with the Coen brothers. Robert Rodriguez, at least, I still love him no matter what. Gino Rolotero, James Gunn, and Lloyd Coffin are like the best living directors. There's a lot of great directors, but those are like the ones I love the most. Those are my top ten. Uh, Ken Smith is probably number eleven. Uh, number twelve is Jody Hill. I don't know if I'm ever going to do her. I already did a Jody Hill retrospective, and a lot of people don't really consider Jody Hill to be a great director. I love Jody Hill. I love East Bound Down. I love Vice Principal. I love East. I love The Fit Fist Way. I love Ovation Report. I love fucking Legacy of Tony Hunter. I mean, Jody Hill is like my 12th favorite director of all time, and he does not have at least one fresh movie on Rotten Tomatoes, I believe. I think all the movies are rotten. His newest movie has like a 20 or 30% Rotten Tomatoes. It's crazy. But Sam Raimi, though, is universally loves Cure Movies and Hard Grades, and rated a direct western. That's the thing about Sam Raimi, he's very versatile. He's directed western, superhero, romance, horror. He's directed like almost every genre I can think of. Maybe not. Uh, I think the only movie he hasn't directed. It's weird enough, I don't think he's ever directed a war movie, but he is scheduled to direct World War Three, whatever that comes out. Which is, on the trivia page on IMDb, says, Sam Raimi's first action movie since Spider-Man 3. And Spider-Man 3 came out literally over 10 years ago, in 2007. In about two years, Spider-Man 1 would be 20 years old. I mean, Evil Dead is over 30 years old. It came out in 1981. In 2020, it will be 40 years old. 2021, in one year, Evil Dead will have its 40th anniversary. I mean, Sam Raimi's been around for a long time. The Book of the Dead is just another great movie in his career, and an amazing career that I think I'll continue to cover in this video series. I'll see you guys later.